when you're going into the edit hours and it's like, okay, cool, I got the assignment done. But then after the assignment, that's where the real work begins for me. I would, I would work every day for 10 hours with Gary and then at night for my side projects, work on Gary V short film. <laughs> Hey, Lab Coat agents, LCA family, uh, thank you so much as always for tuning into another incredible webinar. This is live. And I will tell you, this topic today, getting closer to the end of the year, is absolutely incredible. We got some huge, huge points content creation, video marketing, and NFT talk. But more importantly than the topics themselves, the gentlemen that are taking their time out of their busy days to drop some knowledge bombs is incredible. So, We've got the man, the myth, the legend, D-Rock, and he is the executive creative director for Team Gary V. He is an incredible man all the way through and through. I cannot wait to pick his brain, but it doesn't stop there. We've got Ryan. Now, Ryan, at the end of the day, he's a CEO of Very Social, a brilliant mind when it comes down to digital aspects, absolutely crushing it and dominating in the market. So we've got great stuff. And Hopefully we get Tristan jumping in here. Uh, you know, a lot of things going on. So we might see that man. And we all know him as the CEO of Lab Code Agents. I am Greg Fowler. I'm a humble moderator for Lab Code Agents. I'm the founder of Lionbolt Media and the host of Real Estate Titans. So without further ado, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time. It's an honor to share the stage with you. No, my pleasure. Um, love being a Lab Coats uh, sponsory and uh doing uh, webinars, you know, once a month and, um, you know, content creation, video marketing, NFTs. Um, I would say that they're the future of, you know, social media marketing, but they're the now. And um, I wanted to bring on DRock um, because I know DRock and uh, I know Gary V. I think we all know Gary V. Um, you know, but it, DRock has such a great role. He's literally behind the lens. So he hears everything that, that Gary says, and he's involved in everything that Gary does. And so um, I just wanted to get in and really hear his take on like these important uh, topics that, that means so much to me that I, I think we all use them every single day. Like content creation is, is really like a machine at this point. Um, I, you know, I used to always think of like ideas like, how am I going to like get connected to this buyer or like meet this seller to sell this house or sell this house? And now it's like, I actually have ideas of like, oh my God, I just saw this on I, like this movie. And now I should maybe use the voiceover for this to create a video content that will go viral on TikTok, you know? So it's like, you know, us as, as real estate agents and marketers, um, you know, content is such a big part of what we do because it's branding and it's about mind sharing. It's about connecting with your, your, followers who are on Instagram, which are actually your target market. Um, so, you know, DRock, like, you know, you're from this Gary V, you know, mindset of like posting seven times a day. Um, you know, how, how do you go about, you know, content? Like, is it, what's the strategy behind it? Yeah. Hey everyone, Ryan, thank you for the awesome intro. You too, Greg. I appreciate it. I love your energy. Um, I also like your setup pretty clean and sharp over there. Thank well, you, my friend. Nice. That means a lot coming from you. You got that well, eye for sure. Well, I, I appreciate the good lighting, you know, it, yeah. means, it means so much. And I love the neon sign you can bring to that. Um, Ryan, you know, we've gotten to know each other over the last few months. It's been a pleasure. We even ran to each other a few times in New York. And then also, I think, where were we? Austin. We were Austin. Yeah. So Austin and then Tristan, obviously we, we've had a budding relationship over the last year and I appreciate everything that you do. Um, yeah, I mean, posting seven times a day um, feels a little bit old time. Like we're posting up to 150 to 200 times a day now um, for, for Gary's brand across all social networks. So in order to get there, I think as creatives and as marketers and as real estate agents or whatever else you do in here, um, I think it's important to realize that uh, you need to be humble. I think creativity a lot of times back in the day was hey, this is my idea. I'm going to drive it all the way through no matter what, not listen to anybody else's opinion and, and like get what I want done. Where a lot of times now 
why words like empathy and self-awareness and curiosity are all coming out of Gary's mouth a hundred million times a day is because that's what it really takes to create. Um, you know, it's funny. I, outside looking in, you, you would think that Gary knows everything that's going on with every piece of content that goes out. But, you know, by the time I was editing like the fourth Daily V, you know, four or five years ago now at this point, I, Gary had only had to watch it like the first four or five because he had to give me the content. I'm like, hey, we can't really show this person. Hey, we can't really talk about that. But by the fourth or fifth episode, he had never watched another Daily V episode ever again. And so thinking about personalities and creatives, this man entrusted me as a creative. And I have a serious head cold right now. I'm sorry. My nose is all stuff. So I'm like, my nasalness is even more accelerated. But um, I just wanted to give that context. But also, like, uh, this man entrusted his entire brand uh, to kind of in my hand in a way of, like, I just put out 20, 30, 4-hour, 5-hour, 10-minute episodes of this man's life, and he never watched a single goddamn thing. And to me, that takes a lot of trust and a lot of humility and a lot of, hey, if you're trying to build something big, you got to like, you got to trust the ones that you're hiring around you. And you got to put, take your creative sub- subjectivity out of it. There was very, very little creative subjectivity that Gary had when it came to like the work that we put out. But I will say that when it was something that he wanted to make sure it happened, he became a dictator and he did it. And that's how like, I think most great things should be done. It's like, hey, give everyone the room they need to breathe to create, to work to be an employee to be the best human and then as soon as they do something wrong or hey i really need to shift the focus because i need it to do this objective then put them in a box a lot of times people are put in a box the moment they step in the door for a job or a role or a position and i think gary does the opposite and i've learned a lot from that and i think that influenced my creative and influenced my humility around creativity you know i often say i'm broken because um, like there's no like, I don't know what's right. I don't know what is good. I just know it when I see it or we'll let the market decide, you know? So there's a brief little intro. Yeah, just going off what you said, D-Rock, I, you know, I, Gary's lucky to have you. I mean, you know, I think when you can connect with uh, like a videographer or a social media manager or your marketing director that really like gets your brand and could lean on it and like make you better and be more creative. Um, because I think, you know, a lot of the times as agents is like, you know, we know our craft, we're, we're realtors and especially the old school, the OGs, you know, like they just, they know every house on the block, they know the neighborhood inside and out, but like, are they creators, you know? And I think now in this day and age in this like social media realm, like, you know, you're having to have multiple jobs and realtors already have a shit ton of jobs. Like we're doing a hundred different things and now you add creator onto it. Like, I think it's having that, that team in place that, that could allow you to do you and be what, you know, who you are and, you know, let the creatives be creative. And and I think like, it's invaluable having someone like you, uh, you know, working with Gary, like he's very lucky to have you. I appreciate that. And honestly, like Ryan, you've done a really good job of surrounding yourself with winning players i've had the chance to like talk to them they seem hungry and available and creative too so like honestly just allowing your employees or the people that work with you to have a sandbox to be creative in is kind of like the dream i think you know if you would have told me at 16 years old that my job would be holding a camera around and following a guy for a living that i would have laughed you out of the room that I, A, didn't like documentaries in, when I was a kid. Now I love them. And B, just had no interest in that. And also there was no roadmap to that. There was nobody doing that. You might have seen it for like the celebrities. Like, oh, did you guys uh, happen to catch this on social? I got bombarded, but Biggie had a videographer named D-Rock. No K at the end. D-R-O-C. And he, he literally picked up the camera and said, hey, Biggie, I'm going to start filming you. And so, like, it was such a weird, like, dynamic because that's what I did to Gary. Hey, Gary, I'm going to film you. 
It was uh, kind of fun. That's amazing. <laughs> but like you wouldn't normally see it unless it was a celebrity. And now everybody is an influencer, you know, very much like how Gary called it in Crush It in 2009. That really manifested into a lot of jobs and opportunity. I feel like in a world where everyone's talking about there's no job and no, like there's no opportunity, there's a whole new wave of opportunity that's coming with personal brands, um, company being smarter about their brands, uh, NFT and crypto. There's so much new opportunity coming. Um, and a lot of times you just got to be ready for it, you know? Yeah, I, I feel I'd also love to like, jump in. Oh, go ahead, Ryan. No, yeah. go ahead. No, you go, Greg. Go, go. Oh well, I, I was just kind of looking at it from uh, you know LCA standpoint. And the audience is, you know, D Rock and Ryan. You guys are talking about content creation and the importance of really just being in that moment and capturing that and and sharing it with the world. But from I guess directly from that real estate standpoint, what's your recommendation? Uh, when you're looking to find the right videographer, the creative or photographer to, to bring on either for individual projects or as a full-time employee, because I know the conversations that I have across the United States, that is a thought to, hey, I want to bring that on. I want to have somebody document and really capture content, push it out for me. Any advice you'd give uh, to anybody out there as far as bringing that on, uh, individual projects or a full-time employee? Yeah. I mean, so I own an agency, so I'm you know, I, I employ a ton of creatives and, and I'm always filming. And I really think I did. That's why I keep on saying how lucky Gary is to have D-Rock because like having that right videographer that could like, you know, calm you down, make you feel comfortable in front of the camera could give you those like one liners. Like that's so important. Um, and I think something that, you know, I, I've kind of come up with this concept um, where, I now pay my videographers by the minute of content that they produce. You know, I think a lot of the times it's like, oh, even five years ago, it's like, okay, there's like the listing video, there's like the agent bio video, but now it's like, you know, the 60 second reel or the 30 second TikTok or, you know, the hot take. So, um, you know, I work with my videographers to, you know, actually charge like per piece of content. Um, and, and honestly, like they didn't even know, like I talked to videographers and they didn't even know this type of like the scale of how to have, like, but it, it has to make sense, you know, because it's like, we're creating content, we're putting it on Instagram, you know, and the one thing I think that agents have a problem with is that this is all brand building. So they're not actually seeing like that direct lead from it. But I, if they actually look at their numbers, you know, over the year and say, you know what? I spent like 20 K on a videographer this year, but like my business tripled, you know, I honestly think like, you know, if you put invest in your brand, you know, it's much better than investing in, in Zillow leads and the leads that come in through, you know, your Instagram or an email or, you know, running into the street and saying, hey, Brian, I saw you, I saw that bagel video that you did. It was awesome. Like, you know, I, you, I'm thinking about moving into Gramercy and you just did, you know, a bagel review and Gramercy, like, you know, that happens to me all the times. And those leads are so much more solid rather than like, you know, chasing down some like Zillow lead that's like cold. And, and you know, I, I think agents just really, they, they need to really understand. And I think they all, everyone's really coming to that. Like brand building is so important. And to get back to, on your question, like having a videographer, having a social media team that really like gets you and can take like what you're doing to another level because we're too busy to really do a good job and we probably don't have the skill set to do it on our own. I love that, Ryan. I, I also, I love the, I, lo I love the uh, charging per minute thing. I think that's super smart. I like content produced. I've never approached it that way. That sounds logical in my you'd be, head. You'd be very rich man from Gary. <laughs> Um, and then I also want to give Gary credit where he knew there is no me sitting behind a camera handing him one liner. He is such an alpha talent. And like as lucky as he is to have me, I also am lucky to have found him. I've worked with many clients in the past who I've had to feed lines to and like direct. And there's something when you have a real talent on camera, you're just, you're, it's unmatched, it's unparalleled. So, you know, as much as I would like to take credit, I appreciate that. But Gary is an alpha talent. Um, and then in terms of what I look for in a videographer or a creative is curiosity, honestly. I think, you know, Gary's been talking about it a lot. Me and Andy, who, who hires on Team Gary, used to talk about it a, a bunch. 
I really think that I'm not the best videographer in the world or the best DP or the best editor in the world. I think I just am super curious about Gary and his life and what we're doing. Like, I love the subject of it. And so, you know, we had a division called Vayner Talent where we would have talent represented uh, by us who we'd, we would also make content for. My whole thesis with that division was we should have had videographers who love the subject of that person. Because then when you're going into the edit hours and it's like, okay, cool, I got the assignment done. But then after the assignment, that's where the real work begins for me. I would, I would work every day for 10 hours with Gary and then at night for my side projects, work on Gary V short films or work on things that I thought would work for Gary and brand in addition to the work. And so I think that is something that for me is A, is hard work and still by my parents. And then number two, just real curiosity around the subject matter and real passion for it. And I think that really helps. And I think there is ways to find those people out there. I think you, you just have to do a rigorous um, interviewing process, but even more important, hire and then fire fast. Gary talks about this a lot. We bring in the talent, throw them in the water and see what they do. Uh, and then just fire them. Like we started a whole thing where we have a residency program you're brought on for three months. We see how you do. If that goes well, we'll then offer you either an extension or if we really, really, really love you and we have the opportunity for you, we'll offer you a full-time job. And so that's kind of like been our filter at Vayner for a while now. Um, but yeah. D-Rock, what's, it, what's oh, expected from, from those people that are brought in that stay? Like, what, what does that look like if you actually make the cut? Honestly, you know, it's funny, like, We'll laugh about it. Gary will laugh about it. Like when you were walking in the good old days of VaynerMedia at like 9 or 10 p.m., there was this little circle of people over by Gary's office and that was Team Gary or some of us. We, I don't care if you work until midnight. I don't care. I really do not, especially now with COVID, mental health, more well-being. I don't care about that. What I care about is like right now, Right now, if someone sent me a video edited of Gary Vaynerchuk and it was really well, I would offer them a job. This the step beyond the job part that mm. I'm looking for. I'm looking for the person who like wants to live and breathe and kill me because they want to take over my job. That's what I'm looking for. You know, I like that man. And what are you looking on the editing skills? What stands out for you? It's good, good work. <laughs> I don't know, like. I don't know how to describe that. I think, um, yeah, just good, good storytelling, right? I don't think it has to look polished. I don't think it has to be exactly perfect. I think having the right intent behind your creative is the, probably the most important thing. You know, and it's, it's funny, like, even being a videographer, I know that video is not the most important part. Audio is. If you have shit audio... It sucks. If you have great audio but horrible quality video, you really don't care as a consumer. You know, and I think so that's important. Um, and then yeah, just again the curiosity part, right? Like I'm currently if you uh I'll put my desktop. I'm currently editing a short film for Gary around accountability, and that's just me spending hours a day like finding footage about Gary saying the word accountable. And building a film around it, you know? So like doing that in between other work I have going on, like just always trying to grind on something new, you know, proactiveness. But D-Rock, I love the fact that you're mentioning it. You're really kind of correlating that and putting it into a, a package of just natural curiosity for the subject matter and having passion behind it because it, it doesn't feel like work. I, I mean, I know that's thrown around a lot, but at the end of the day, bringing on the right person those are huge key components, but, you know, to, as to Tristan's points, you know, Hey, who's making the cut? What are you looking yeah. for? I, I think that ultimately everyone's wanting to kind of up their game with that content creation and, and video marketing case in point for what we're chatting about here. But Tristan, I mean, do you have anything, any thoughts into that? I mean, you're can constantly, I, can creating. I add one more thought? I'm sorry. Oh, Tristan. Absolutely. You know, we're talking about it as also the people who are hiring the creatives, 
I just want to give one piece of advice for the creatives. And I think it's when you get offered an opportunity that you really care about, try to put aside your own selfish wants and needs and really focus on the mission at hand, the job, the task, the ordeal that you're working on and put them first. Like literally all I did was live, breathe and do things for Gary. And it really paid off for me in an eight year run. A lot of kids that came into our team who are our building would come in, got the opportunity, and then softened out and started working on their own brand. And I was like, wait a minute. The whole point was to come in and get a job, not build up your clout and your reputation on their time. And so I think that's something also to think about. You know, too many people are short sighted. A lot of creatives are short sighted. Hmm. A lot. So I think that's something. Sorry. No, huge advice, DRock. No, no doubt. I, I mean, I, I think looking at it from that creative standpoint, I, I think that that correlates to any real estate professional who's building a team under any aspects. They're looking for the right person who really cares for the the, the entirety, the totality of the group and the team. They're not uh, looking at it to to make their own way. They're really trying to have a team effort. And um, I think that associated with attitude, you know, work ethic, drive, and continuous nature, but. Uh, you know, huge advice all the way through. But but Tristan, I, I got to ask you because you're constantly creating, you're so integrated, you know, with videographers, photographers and, and creating that content in there. A- any thoughts uh, to, the, to those uh, processes, content creating, uh, video marketing, Tristan, just to kind of bounce that dude, off? Dude, it's such a great point that DRock brings up. It's like, I'm looking for those people that have passion for it, that I don't have to be writing them and saying, where's, where's this cool thing or what can we do next? It's already coming from them. I, I reached out to D-Rock and I'm like, dude, I need somebody new out here in LA. And he's like, all right, let me see who I can find. But the, the reason is he knows what we, we're looking for, right? Because he is that type of person, right? You are too, Greg, Ryan, me. We would just do this because we love it and we keep doing it. I think that's what you need to look for when you're hiring somebody that's, that's creative, or brings the video aspect or content. And Greg, to answer that, you just have to be looking for character. Like that right character is so key, man. In in, in everything, not just the video, but in everything. Huge. Huge. I wildly agree with that. Yeah, I mean, this this panel is incredible. I mean, again, Ryan, D-Rock, Tristan, this is so great. I So we, we kind of honed in on content creation. I want to keep moving forward. So any thoughts to anybody, wherever you guys want to go, I mean, top experts all the way through and through, anybody who's listening to this or watching it live or after the fact on YouTube, any ideas or thought processes for video marketing specifically for real estate professionals? What are you seeing? What would you be doing? What would you recommend? I know that's an open-ended question, but any of you guys, I'd love yeah. to hear your opinions. Um, well, I, it's it goes back to what D Rock was saying. It's like your cur- curiosity and like, what are you curious in? What's your passion? What and and we go back and we at very social. We call it our pillars or content. And so it's like you know you have your pillars, like what you're you're passionate about. Um, an example for me, like uh, I'm passionate about real estate, social media, my family. New York City. I really think I'm the mayor of New York City. I always have something. Uh, there's always something going on. There's always some sort of content creation within the city. If it's like uh, a new restaurant or a new uh, rooftop that I'm going to or an event um, and food and fashion. And so like, I really like, I look at those pillars of mine and I look at the time of the year and I'm like, all right, how can I create content? And, and like, creativity like you know i think there's a lot of different aspects of being creative you know like there's there's videographers there's graphic designers then there's real estate agents i mean um you know we're we're a cut from a different cloth because you know we didn't go to school like we didn't go to college to be a real estate agent you know uh, most real estate agents uh, like have like two or three different careers and have some time had to recreate themselves and um, I think that takes a lot of creativity in its own. And like I said, this is a new age of being a realtor. It's not just selling homes. Um, it's it's really building your brand and like being creative because there's a ton of us and we're all on social media. Like, how do we differ? You know, like how does Tristan and I differ? You know, I feel like we're both 
you know, selling a lot of properties. Like he's in California. I'm, I'm, I'm in New York, but like, we're different people. Like I can see a video that, that Tristan does. And, and like, I might want to like do something that's like my own version, you know, like, I don't think you, you really have to be a copycat to like, you know, to like take something and like create your own with it because like we're all our own brand and we have our own personalities um and so like i might do something that tristan does but i'm going to do it my way and i think he would respect that and if somebody wants to knock off wants to do a bagel review i'm like dude go ahead do a bagel review i'm actually like happy for people to do things like that um i, I copied it from dave poor and i with the pizza review i'm like ah, oh, i'm jewish i might as well do bagels so um you know i think really like like really looking at like what you're passionate about what you're curious about and then like creating content and like being creative and talk to creatives like have a like i have a team around me i mean i'm on six different social media platforms it's freaking crazy like i can't do that by myself like i'm on instagram facebook tiktok linkedin twitter and um i think i'm forgetting one more but it's a lot it's a lot of work and i i have a team of creatives around me I and YouTube, i have like YouTube, one or two right people. right uh, youtube youtube I don't think you meant YouTube. YouTube. There you go, YouTube. There you go. Yeah. Um, YouTube is that was my problem child this this year. I'm still trying to crack that that code, you know. Well, that's uh, why he, that's why it was forgotten, you know. Just, that's why I was forgotten. That's probably away. why I haven't cracked it yet. <laughs> <Throw them away. laughs> um, but you know, it's like, and also it's like I look around and I I see people that inspire me, like like a Gary V, like a, a Tom Ferry, um, like a Grant Cardone, like a Tristan, like a D Rock, like. These are people that that I'm looking at that are the same age as me that like aren't much smarter than me, but like they're out there and they're like being authentic. They're uh, they're creating content that that that's really relevant with people. And I am, too. I mean, at this point, you know, I've been working at it for so long. Like I have a following now. Um, and I think when you have start to have a following, you know, people are looking at what you're doing and it, it just gives you much more clout. It gives you clout when you're trying to sell property. When you go into a listing pitch and you say you have, you know, 20,000 followers, like sellers notice that kind of stuff. So, you know, but it starts from the very beginning, like what you're passionate about, what you're curious about and like creating content on that. And Ryan, I, you had me at bagels, just so you know, uh, you know, I'm a big Dave Portnoy fan with one bite. Uh, I would I would caution anybody though. I'm an East Coast fan when it comes to bagels. I don't care where you are; they're not making bagels anywhere no. like they are in New York. No, they're um, not. I'll have a conversation if anybody wants to in the chat, but it's just not happening. But I, I think one thing that really stood out, uh, Ryan, with that was identifying the pillars. So I guess that anybody's that on here that's tuning in now or after the fact, I think to Ryan's point, identifying your pillars of passion and who you are and what you're about, and creating content off of that, Ryan. Do you have any advice on identifying pillars? Because like you said, everybody's different. I mean, you can look to your peers and to, to people that you ad admire in the field. But uh, if you were talking directly to a client, how would you say, hey, Greg, here's how I would recommend you identifying your pillars to start going to create content. Any thoughts? Yeah. What do you do? Like, what do you do every day? Like, what is your, look at your schedule. Like, where did you go? Are you into working out? Did you travel? Did you go to this restaurant? Are you doing certain events? Like, you know, what kind of real estate are you looking at? Are you looking at like high-end properties? Um, are you looking at investment properties? You know, I, I think it's just like what you're passionate about, what you're curious about, like writing that down. I look at my pillars of content every single day. Like I, I'm a, I'm a big I don't want to say like I'm a plan planner, like it's really just bullet points, but I have my pillars of content like right there. And I sit in my computer, I get my day going and I'm looking at my pillars of content and I'm like, and then I'm, I'm just, it's like top of mind for me. So when I'm like looking in, I'm like scrolling through um, Instagram or looking on YouTube, like I'm seeing what other people are doing, or I'm just going about my day. Like I'm actually thinking about what kind of content I want, like based on my pillars of content. Can I, can I add to that? <clears throat> You know, I think um, a lot of times when people, personalities and people, you know, they often think of the word niche, like people are told, hey, you got to say niche. And I agree with that. I think niche is smart. Like if you're a real estate agent, you should be in the niche of real estate agents and talk about real estate agents and also talk about um, all the like, the things behind that niche. But I don't think niche equals one dimensional. I think 
you know, Gary has started a lot of different businesses around all of his interests, very much like what Ryan has been saying. And I think a lot of people get too scared to post on social or find different categories to post about because they're worried about the lights for the views. If they're in this niche of real estate agent and then they post a video about them riding a motorcycle and it doesn't do well, they get hurt. And I think, so I think the bigger conversation is just post around the conversation you want to have. I think social media is having the conversation you want to have. And it's funny, the last call I had with Tristan and his team, uh, he was talking to me about this lady on TikTok who would say, hey, good morning, Colorado. And literally, she does that like once a week. I think as a real estate agent, it is very important to be local within your branch or area and become the mayor of New York, like Ryan says. Like becoming the establishment in your small town, your big city, your own neighborhood of your big city, like that to me is how you could really start to build like a small, really good following community, you know? And then I also think about, you know, Tristan, you've heard me say this too many times now, but uh, I, we keep bringing it up because I think it's important. If you have 200 people that follow you, imagine yourself surrounded in a room with 200 people and they all follow you. Now, if you don't have the audacity to say hi to anybody and you're not responding to every single comment, then you don't deserve to grow. And I think that is the balance of like, cool, build, focus on your niche, go deep into your niche, really provide value to the people in the community that's there. Also talk about the things that you love doing, like Ryan's been saying, and then also, also respect the people that do follow you and ask them to get involved. Ask them, hey, what are things that you want to see from me? Hey, these are questions that I, uh, I've, I've put out there. What questions do you have for me to answer for you? Being in the customer service, service business is what social media is all about, you know, in my opinion. True. Yeah, and just going off D Rock's, D Rock starts conversations. Like he literally, it's like he's his social media is like so open ended. Like I, he wants to create that dialogue. Um, so I, I totally get where he's coming from there. And listen, you know, it, it, if you don't, you have a post and it doesn't get likes. It happens to everybody, especially with this algorithm, like the way that it's at right now. Like uh, it's just happening. You know, I really, you can't. It's like if you we're salespeople as realtors. And, you know, if you're sit there and you're going to dwell on every deal that you lost, like you're going to be a miserable person. And we're actually pretty upbeat, happy people. Um, so I think if you have a post that like doesn't perform well, like who cares, like on to the next one, you have to be consistent with it. Like that's the number one thing. And that's why I also like having an agency, I think, you know, having someone work on my social, it's like, you know, I'm on off doing 10 other things where, but I know my social is going to be consistent and it's going to get posted. I think that's so important because once it's like, you know, it's, I'm posting a few days here and a post there. It's just like being consistent is so important. It's important to your brand. And, and also just like going back to being the mayor of like your city, it's like, if you could sell your city, you could sell that house or you can work with that client. Like people want to see the passion that you have for that that community that you're in. And so I think it like starts with, with where you live right now. Like that's the number one. I don't know when I'm going to post about post about where you live. You're there every day. Go to talk about the coffee shop, talk about your routine that you do every day. You know, I, I think um, there like anybody who's like, I don't know what the post is, is just very closed minded. And I, I Gary V spoke at the, the compass uh, retreat and he said, there's the OGs, there's the original agents that have been set in their ways that are doing their, their, you know, the same strategies that they've been doing for years. And then there's the newbies, the newbies that are out there on social media, being creative, you know, being proactive. And they're going to take, the newbies are going to take off a uh, market share from the OGs if they don't adapt. Like they're, this is part of our culture right now. It's mainstream. You know, there's 2 billion people on Instagram. 500 million of them are over the age of 25. Those are all potential homeowners right there, which are all potential clients. Like you need to be on social media. Uh, if you're not, you're going to be losing market share. And, and like working with gifted videographers and, and creatives is just going to make you better because we're too busy just to focus it on ourselves. 
That was huge, Ryan. And again, when you're you're dropping so much knowledge for everybody to pick up and and everything that D Rock and Tristan and yourself have been saying to me, and I'm I'm taking notes the whole time, but correlations to being consistent and showing passion, getting conversations started and going deep on the conversations, your relationships. Here's where I want to hopefully have a light bulb go off with everybody who's listening. Everything that you guys mentioned in social media and digital aspects is identical to your physical world. Think about that. Being consistent, right? Showing passion, having conversations, going deep in your relationships. Nothing's different. Treat it the same. That's the way that I would look at it. But I love what you guys are saying. It's big. That's a very good point. Tristan, do you want to add to that before we move on? Dude, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Love that. All right. Could I answer Lee's question real quick? Dude, oh, yes, sorry, please. Not, not, not Lee. Um, Alvin, sorry. How do you encourage your video editors to up their video editing talents without hurting their feelings? Um, if you're a good manager, I think your tone of voice and how you deliver the feedback, I, I don't think feedback is bad. I think most of the time it's the delivery of that feedback that often is misread. I would just say, hey, bro, like we need to give you feed. Hey, bro or gal. We need to give you feedback and the feedback I have. And if they can't take feedback for a job, then they're lost already, you know? Um, but also just coming in with empathy, like not my way is right. Well, hey, why don't we try this? Why don't we approach it this way? That. Um, and then Jessica, when you're building your brand, what are your thoughts on making content on different subjects that make up your life for, versus focusing on one thing? i.e. real estate, lifestyle combo, including health, faith. I think that's literally what Ryan and I were kind of just discussing. I think it's very important because, again, you don't, you're not a one-dimensional human being. Very much like Greg was saying, of like whatever's on social in real life, you're not one-dimensional in, in real life. So like don't be one-dimensional on social media. You know, there's, you're very different when you're like out with your gals in Vegas versus when you're with your parents in their living room over Christmas dinner, you know, like you're two different people, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just different. And you got to like apply the context um, everywhere. I think if you are going to post about other things, give it context. Be like, Hey, I'm going through this thing. I'm thinking about this. I think the more context that you give, the better, you know? Love that, D-Rock. And, and seriously, thank you so much for, for taking the time to answer the questions and, you know, just let everybody who's live here, it really does matter. And uh, please, if you got more questions, everybody who's tuning into this, jump in. We'll try to cover them, answer everything we can. I picked up your cue, Ryan, uh, moving forward with NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Um, and I can't wait to get your guys' feedback on that. So yeah, run it wherever you guys want to go, wherever you want to talk about it. I can't wait. Um, I'm gonna, to start off here i want to hear your i'm excited to hear what you have to say yeah i'm going to follow up real quick with lee and then we'll go we'll go back into the nft world um how do you how about the other side of things how do you let your boss know that you need a little bit more time in the sandbox to create on your own honestly that to me was i just took the extra time on my own personal time to work on the things that i thought i wanted to work on but that's just me as a creative other than that, I would just say, try to have the conversation with your boss, you know? It's all about communication, you know? Yesterday, Gary and I had a very pivotal moment in my career off of a 10-minute call. One call, 10 minutes, changes my whole focus for 2022. And I'm excited about it, you know? And that's because I built up enough credibility, clout, enough things with him to know that he, he now isn't trusting me with, this new mission, this new goal, you know? So communication in social media and in real life. <laughs> um, NFTs. I think, you know, it's very early. Everyone's trying to make a lot of money. I think that's a problem. I think, um, and especially like, it, it feels like I'm regurgitating Gary because this is literally what he says, but like, it's a gold rush. Everyone's trying to take advantage of it. There's a lot of dumb projects out there. Don't buy everything that you see. Do 55 hours of homework. That's the basic summary of NFTs right now. The other side of NFTs is there's so much opportunity. And there's going to be 
you know, talking about real estate agents, I'm talking to this company who you buy a fractional share of a, of a piece of property out in Spain for a hundred dollars. And all of a sudden you own an NFT and you also own equity in property. I don't know. You guys are all real estate agents. You can't get into real estate investing with a hundred dollars last year or even 10 years ago. And so I think that is something to think about. I think every contract in the world is going to be taken over by NFTs. I think that, you know, right now we're seeing as like little cartoons and doodles. I think it becomes more like, um, like this on your, on your phone, you're going to have like more of a wallet. I think it'll also be built into like where you have highlights on Instagram. You have your, like your little NFT collections. I think as virtual reality and that those things become real in 10, 20 years where everybody's using virtual reality, then I think you're going to have digital collections that you're going to want to have. And I think, you know, collecting projects and art is important, but I also think there's so many smart contracts, it's going to be out of control. Um, I don't want to start one yet because I really want to be thoughtful about it. I think a lot of people, again, are hey, I have, I'm an artist, or hey, I'm a graphic designer, hey, I, I can put some, something out, and someone will buy it, and I make money, versus like, what Gary is really trying to do is build a community around his, and deliver in real life experiences with the digital, I think that's where we're going to see a lot of fun innovation over the next five years. And I agree with that, and I think what we're going to start seeing are bigger companies do that exact same thing. Where now, if you like, let's say bring in Disney, you're gonna buy the the season pass to go in. They're gonna throw in a special NFT, and the only way you get that is that route. So yeah, I definitely agree with you, D Rock. And when you bring it into real estate, you know the the real estate agents that are going to be pushing forward with this, then start doing a similar thing. You want this house, you get this NFT too, right? Now all of a sudden, there's a different dimension to it. That's why I loved when Gary. Uh, released uh, V Friends. It was a combination. I was like, "Oh, that's speaking to a lot more people than just those people that are are understanding the NFT world." He's bringing in those other people that understand the real world too, right? The older generation, and he's bridging that gap. And that's why I love that. I mean, did you guys see the Mattel uh, collab that we did, the Uno card deck thing that yes. we put out? It was Mattel's biggest collaboration they've ever done. And it's sold out in the quickest they've ever done under an hour. And so like that is brand and influence, but also like V Friends is not gonna just be the little token that you see and a ticket to the conference that we have, VCon, but also like Gary's gonna build out the IP of these characters. Um, and I think that's super important, especially if like you're trying to do the things that we're trying to do, we can build IP and character and brand. Uh, we really believe in that stuff. And, and I honestly believe that there is the next Geico out of NFTs for real estate agents or real estate in the real estate world. I really believe that the next version of like Geico or Progressive or Snape Farm, all those insurance companies, how they built out, you know, the girl, the lizard, all those things. That stuff is going to all be born out of NFTs moving forward. That's pretty cool, dude. I like yeah. that. As we're talking here, I'm waiting for the Steamboat Willie NFT to pop on Vive, and I'm like, I want it, just so you know. I love that. Is it going to? Is, are there like announcements? It's dropping. Here, I'll, I'll just share my screen with you so you can see what I'm waiting for. Everyone knows who Steamboat Willie is, right? I was literally whistling that tune in my head as soon as Tristan said it. it was so awesome. th that's the that's one of the, the companies yeah. that uh, Disney's teamed up with, right? Marvel and everybody. And so they're about to drop Steamboat Willie. And I can't see where it's at, but I'm on logged in with my phone and Amazing. from Disney. And I'm like, dude, that's that's what I'm waiting for at 12 p.m. Pacific, d -Ron. That's amazing. I love that. That's very cool. Yeah. Are you guys, you guys know what PO apps are? No, shoot. PO apps are like, we had an event down in Miami for Art Basel and PO apps are a sticker. Remember like back in the day, Foursquare, you would check in or those check in things. It's yep. very much like that. So now like for that event that I went to, I have a PO app in my collection 
And if you're a ticketed hair went to this event. And so that is also an NFT. Dude, it's so kind like of that, like that's like a whole new layer of like things that are happening now um in the NFT space. Wow, I like that. Awesome. Then then you can have collectibles per event. And then and then like future dating or future just networking. Oh my god, you were in you did the event in uh Art Basel in 2021. I did it in 2022. Zero. That's amazing. Da, 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 da. We could you know? we could do that for open houses. That's what I that's why I brought it up because open houses are like your PO app event. Hey, come to this event, you get this PO app, people feel cool, you know? And we then, just need to and then if you're like a long-term real estate investor, you're like, yeah, I went I went to 10 different houses in Malibu before it became Malibu because I knew it was going to be big, but I just didn't have the funds or the resources to yeah. get there. But your track record was right. We just need to create the official real estate NFT so that people come to us to to get them for open houses. Yeah, the white for, label. For the white yeah. List. yeah, the white list. That's what we need to do, Ryan, Greg, and D Rock. I like it. I like it. Smart. Let's get it. But also, I think with NFTs, you know, just, you know, like, this is the future. Uh, this is where we're at. Um, NFTs, the metaverse, um, you know, and I think just like knowing this kind of stuff, it's social currency. You know, if you're on top of it, if you, it's a conversation starter. So I think that's like one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring on D rock is just to really like, he's in it, you know, he's ahead of the game. And this is something that's so new. Like I'm pretty techie and still I'm like, I'm, this was, I wanted to take in this conversation and learn. Um, and like, we're, and that's because everything is evolving, you know, technology, social media, and like NFTs, metaverse, like this is the new wave. So you might as well get on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok now because there, you know, if you, if you skip that boat, like getting on that next, next boat is going to be even more difficult. I agree with that. And also like, you know, just like the real world, I like, I like the example, by the way, Greg, the social media it is the real world and vice versa. The same is going to be for this too, right? Like you're going to walk into real life events, get PO apps, want to collect those things. You're going to also want to have digital art to show off uh, in the future. You know, a lot of people didn't care about social media following for a long time until it mattered. You know, people didn't care about verification badges until it mattered. And I think this is all part of social currency. You so know? true, man. Totally. That's all I have unless there's a specific question on it. Yeah, no, I, I does does anybody else have any other thoughts on, on that? I mean, we're covering a lot of ground. This is full I'll of just, info. Yeah, I'll just I'll just I have heard, I've heard a few horror stories stories recently. If it sounds too good to be true, do not put your wallet address into the site. So many people are like, hey, I get a V free V friend and like put it in the wallet, even though Every eight minutes on Discord, we're warning people, do not put out your wallet. Do not put out your wallet. Do not. And they still do it. And they lose all the money that they've invested. There's that. And, and a lot of that's rooted in, yeah, but I can make money quicker this way. So please, with common sense, do enough research. <laughs> and then also, like, spend the 50 hours of research. There's don't a ton just, of YouTube don't videos just ape, yeah, don't just, for NFTs. Yeah, don't just ape in. Don't invest quick really spend time and understand the founders understand the project look in the marketplace you know that's what's so cool about all this is like everything on the blockchain you can see the value d rock do you do you use metamask or i use metamask okay i was gonna say that's that's the best and open c is are you looking searching i mean i'm I'm on open c listen i i I'm not in a place right now where I can afford to buy any more NFTs. I kind of went very hard this last March from punks and V friends. And so I'm like tapped out. I have no money to invest. So, and I also just don't believe in a lot of smaller projects that I have seen. Yep. And, I, and I don't have the time to spend right now to invest in the 50 hours. True. You know, I, I invested in crypto punks back in March only because Gary called me and eight friends and was like, hey, you should buy. And I sold a bunch of my sports cards that we had been buying and selling all through last year and was able to afford that, you know? But a lot, there's so much, there's so much out there that's good. 
but also so much bad. So please spend the time. Yeah, good point, you know? dude. Very, very good point. Last question for you. Best way to get started in NFTs? That's a great question to end with. For me? Yeah, that's a question for you. Like if somebody was going to start um, NFTs, where would they go? To, to build, uh, to make, or to, to buy? To Sorry. buy. To buy. To buy. Yeah, I would, I would look at historical data and honestly just do 50 hours of research on that project. Like really, that's, that sounds like Christmas Day and New Year's. So I, I think that together yeah. makes yeah. like 48 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't spend any time with your family. None. That'd be horrible. <laughs> None. You know? Greg, it's Cut over. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Done, Tristan. <laughs> Hey, I, I do, D-Rock, I, I know Tristan, that was the last question. I got to ask you this. This is just a, per, a personal question for me to you. You've been through so much in your life. You've seen so much incredible experiences and, and just conversations and people and, and travel. Is there anything in your mind over your career path thus far that really sticks out? Just a, a, an incredible memory or a moment uh, that you could share with everybody just to kind of wrap everything up. I know this is off the cuff, but I was just curious. Yeah. I have one immediately. Um, Gary called me with some pretty cool news about my career probably a week or two ago. You know, I'm eight years in almost now. Um, and oftentimes, there's been so many times I've been offered to leave, offered to like do something else, offered, you know, hey, we can pay you double. Hey, you know, you can work a lot less and still make the same amount of money, come work for me. Or like just the amount of distractions that are around in your everyday life when you're trying to stay on the straight and narrow. I think a lot of times, you know, so after he called me, I sent him a test. I was like, hey, this patient shit is real, huh? And then he said, more than you know, winky face. And I think that moment to me has been standing out in the last two weeks because honestly, it, that's all, it was just hard work and patience. And then also like, Man, just really understanding how light, long life is, right? That, I think, that was like a good, clear indicator for me. I'm like, wait a minute, you did the right thing. Dude, you that know, is, the course. Love it. You know? That's yeah. pretty cool, man. So that. Uh, and I think, I think just the message that, that I hear from, from you usually is that patient does pay off if, there's a few things to it. Patience does pay off if you've if you've surrounded yourself with quality people, right? That that and put your hard work and serendipity often play a role in luck, in my opinion. That's kind of something I've said for a while now. Yeah. Hard work and serendipity often play a role in luck. Listen, you are all not here because you just woke up and decided you're gonna be a real estate agent, you're gonna own a real estate company, you're gonna own a marketing company. Greg, I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of contacts on you, but you're doing whatever you do. You have all those books back there. I'm assuming you read at least half of them. So I'm assuming that you're putting in the work. Listen, there's things that you have to do every single day in order to advance to your next place to get the things that you want. But you also do have to audit yourself, audit your priorities, audit the people around you, Tristan, like you said, and then all, audit your ambitions, audit why are you wanting the things that you want? And I think that's something also, if you were to ask me that question again, Greg, there were so many things in my life I thought I wanted or needed that, you know, if you strip it down to the basics, you really don't. And a lot of times that's because of insecurity and posturing versus living life and being happy. And I think a lot of that comes back to all the good principles my parents have raised me with, Gary has raised me with, um and then surrounding myself with awesome people like yourself love this d rock thank you so much for answering that question the the humility the professionalism and and just the the passion that's that's coming out of you is incredible and i know that so many people who are tuning in now are gonna take that last bit to heart uh you know and i think that's a, a wonderful thing to say so thank you so much for answering i know it was off the cuff but i love those questions me too thank you for having me and doing that so Tristan, are we good? Do you do you want to do you want to roll good, out? Or, I just want to I just want to remind everyone that this is recorded, and then we co-hosted this with Ryan, who made this possible. So thank you, Ryan, with the very thank you, Ryan. So sign you're the best, Ryan. You rock, buddy. You rock. You guys are the best. Love speaking with you guys. 
it was it was very good dude it was very very good questions we outlined it well and d rock you didn't fuck up so you're good don't worry oh, thank god i yeah, know i was gonna <laughs> <laughs> anyway thanks thanks everybody merry christmas if you do that happy holidays happy new year Thank <laughs> you.